just clicked on this video, your immediate thought might be, Kala, why are you currently making me look at the Sony PlayStation 3 Cross Media Bar, or XMB for short? You know, as you would. Your follow-up question after that might be, Kala, why are you making me look at a theme of the best character from Final Fantasy XIII? And I will tell you the answer to both of those questions is that we are going to be playing Nier. And also we're going to be playing Nier. And also uh, it starts off immediately with a line of dialogue that I really want you to hear. So which is why I'm talking on the uh, cross media bar before uh, actually starting the game. Uh, Nier is a game direct came out in 2010 directed by Yoko Taro, who is just now finally starting to get a lot of the credit that he's due from the success of Nier Automata, the sequel to this game, which was a fantastic game, very well-earned, well-earned success, and I'm glad that people are starting to appreciate Yoko Taro. But unfortunately, Nier is only available on the PS3 and Xbox 360. There has never been a remaster. There's never even been rumblings or hints of a remaster either, and because of that, I feel like a lot of people, unfortunately, didn't get the chance to experience the story of this game, which is a great one. I, like, I personally think it's, story-wise, it is a little bit better than Nier Automata for me personally. But we're going to get into that and all that jazz, and I have a ton to say about this game. But for now, let's just go ahead and start it, get into it, and then I'll talk a little bit more. So, hope you're doing well, and see you in a second. You dumbass! Start making sense, you rotten book, or you're gonna be sorry. Maybe I'll rip your pages out one by one, or maybe I'll put you in the goddamn furnace. How can someone with such a big, smart brain get hypnotized like a little bitch, huh? Oh, Shadow Lord, I love you, Shadow Lord. Come over here and give Vice a big, sloppy kiss, Shadow Lord. Now pull your head out of your goddamn ass and start fucking helping us! And then we're going to immediately skip it because after that it just plays an amazing song because the, the near uh, the near soundtrack and near automata soundtrack and really anything that Keiichi Okabe writes is just gorgeous. But it just shows a compilation of cutscenes from the game itself that you're gonna see anyway. So I thought it best not to uh, not to show that. So yeah, this is near. It's one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, one of the reasons I also thought it would be silly to show. Uh, the Final Fantasy XIII theme of Fang before we started is because this game, in my opinion, not entirely, it's a weird game. It was never going to have a super mass appeal when it came out in around 2010, like I said. But it certainly did not help the fact that it came out a month, published by Square Enix, and it came out a month after Final Fantasy XIII. Obviously, the audience for Final Fantasy is much wider, so Nier didn't really get as much advertising as it deserved, which is fine. I mean, it is what it is, but... So yeah, that's just an extra thing. So we're going to go ahead and just start. Uh, this is just the fact that... So I do have DLC for this game. It's not... Um, we probably will be doing it, but it's not a story uh, important at all. And now we have the option to enter our name. This is what will be referred to as <laughs> no, no, ni nostalgic. That'll be our name. Uh, this is what will be referred to as in game. So I'm just going to go ahead and go near, which is the canon name of the protagonist.
thrust of the combat with the control so that we can press square to attack and L2 to defend. A really quick note I want to say though, the opening imagery that the game has, but especially the song choice that you first hear, has had such an amazing, apocalyptic, desperate tone. It's just so well done in my opinion. So this is a action RPG, as you can clearly tell. The combat system is, at least at the beginning, relatively basic. I'm really good at invincibility frames right there. <laughs> monsters hear me are they are they gonna come back for me i won't let them hurt you anymore i promise <coughs> you need to eat something stay here stay hidden i'll be right back that foot not ever do you hear me yes dear <laughs> evading press r2 to perform an evasive role like I said, that's those very, very generous invincibility frames. As well as a beautiful animation as well. press L1 for dark hand and if you you'll see we now have a uh, MP bar as well and holding down L1 we can charge up a bunch of uh, magical fists and then let go as time slows down and then we can let go just completely let loose on the enemies and it's very fun I should say with the combat of this game is that the first playthrough, I never 
quite understood just how powerful magic was. I was mostly just a spam attack and then dodge roll kind of player. And the funny thing about that too is that the block is incredibly good. Looked like I did a little auto dodge there. That's interesting. I don't remember that. But the uh, you know, these enemies, obviously being the first enemies you fight in the game, are not quite as aggressive as they maybe should be. Yeah, but blocking is very, very good in this game, and a lot easier than dodging too. We can now press R1 for Dark Blast, which sort of turns us into a uh, shoot 'em up character. Hold the attack or magic buttons to charge your attacks, altering their effects. So that's just explaining the fact that for Dark Hand we can hold it to charge up multiple attacks for more damage, and we're already level five too. Just want to point that out as well. And holding down uh, the the shoot 'em up spell will cause us to do uh, send a lot of little bullets to do damage, but then when we let go, they auto uh, it releases a magic burst that rushes a bunch of targets. I feel like for these little guys, dark hand will probably be probably be better. Where they just explode into a huge cloud of blood that we then, it appears that we then absorb. And even though the book disappeared, whenever we use a spell, it reappears just to explain that the source of our magic is indeed from the book that Nier just told his daughter not to touch. We can now press L1 for dark, ex dark execution, so. This move is very, very cool. And I'm going to want to charge it up all the way. We get some neat sigils and then cause a bunch of impaling spikes to appear from the ground. But my favorite part about it is the fact that the enemies, some of the enemies that are hit by it stay impaled and just float for a while. It's a really good AoE spell. Ouch. I was hoping that the enemy that was attacking us was going to be one of the ones that got impaled, but no such luck. Ouch. Level 15, and now we can press L1 for Dark Lands. So we're basically just cycling through different spells now. One of the coolest things about the magical system in Nier is how it communicates uh, just how much of the spell you can use. For example, you'll see that as we charged up this move, there were notches in the MP bar, and those represent just how much, how many lances we're going to get until we have a full uh, half circle of our character here. Unfortunately, with so many lances, it's a little bit too easy to miss, but. I don't mind. It's satisfying to do it over and over again. Unfortunately, the, yeah, the lances are definitely better single target than they are AOE, like Dark uh, Execution. And we are getting an absolutely obnoxious amount of level ups for fighting these enemies. I'm not really sure what level we get to before this segment ends. I uh, I do like a game that immediately forces you to get used to the combat and discover things on your own with only some basic guidance, but I do think that this section goes on for a little bit longer than it should. Those lances actually did pretty good. This is the last guy, let's see. Something you'll also no doubt have noticed by now, this game is not the best when it comes to optimization for the PS3. It drops frames like crazy and will sometimes sink down to what feels like 15 FPS or so. It's not as bad as uh, Dragon Guard 3 was, 
but it still can get pretty rough. So let's see how much damage all of these lances at the boss do. That's a very decent amount of damage, and then we get our MP back immediately. The boss has uh, melee attacks, as you'd imagine, but also that one ranged attack, but it's pretty easy to avoid. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like he does friendly fire damage to the little enemies around him. Oh, I couldn't move until all those were off. That's too bad. It's a pretty cool move. I wonder if that's HP based, actually. I don't remember seeing that too often. Let's just whack him for the final hit. Attack gauges. When fighting against large enemies, attack gauges will often appear on specific parts of their bodies. Destroy those parts within the time limit to defeat the enemy. Basically, this is just a short uh, DPS check that we have to get before the uh, dial there gets all the way back to the top and makes a full uh, rotation. Usually with spells like lance and magic spells in general, it's pretty easy. That is a level 30 JRPG protagonist if I've ever seen one. Yona, talk to me. Dad, are you all right? Don't worry about me. I'm fine. That's good. Oh, look, I... I found this while you were gone. A cookie? Hey, that's your favorite. Here, we can split it, okay? No, you take it. Dad, no. Can you eat something? All right, give me the small half. No, come on, Dad. You're bigger than me. You have to eat just a... <coughs> Yona. Oh no, I dropped the cookie. I didn't mean to. You, you've always been the one helping me. Yona, what have you done? Oh, oh, I wanted to. Ugh. No, Yona. We need help. We need help. Please, anyone, help, help us. Dad, do you want 
you hear about the crazy dream I had last night? <laughs> I'm going to continue this dialogue soon, I promise, but I just want to clarify and say that yes, this game does have the audacity to introduce to you two characters in a post-apocalyptic snowed over modern day city and then do a hard cut, say it's 1,312 years later, and show you the exact same two characters in a completely different environment with different clothes. You did not misread that. That's what happens. Okay, moving on. This first section also gives us a very nice view into the camera work that Nier does, which is really impressive. So this is sort of, previously we were in an entirely 3D game, but Nier's house is sort of represented in this pseudo uh, 2D style that works really well. Next to Nier's bed we will find a medicinal herb, which is a healing item, and a hundred gold. Nice little stash, I guess, that Nier thought it was time to finally make good on. I should go to the library and see what Popol is up to. And now we're back to 3D. You can use mailboxes to save your progress. Mailboxes can be found all over the world, so keep your eyes peeled for them. If I remember correctly, nope, I don't remember correctly. I thought there was supposed to be a, a collectible on the ground, which would probably just be another medicinal herb. But I'm wrong, so let's go ahead and save. Unfortunately, Nier uses, like many PS3 games, uses the, uh, the built-in uh, PlayStation 3 save menu, which is unfortunate because when I first played the game, I played on the 360, and that has its own save screen, and I vastly prefer uh, its own save, uh, game's own save screens to this integrated thing. PS4 games do it too, so that's too bad, but at least I do like the, uh, the background on this save with the crumpled paper and the rotating sigil up there. So Popola is up there in that building, but if you'll listen for a second, There's a very nice guitar tune playing. So the guitar music we were hearing is actually not just the background of the village or the village theme or whatever you want to call it but actual music being played by this NPC and I just think that's a really nice touch especially how her voice fades in the closer you get to her So it's not just uh, medicinal herbs, we can also get berries, so let's go ahead and not get sidetracked by shinies and instead go see what Popola, uh, if Popola has anything for us to do. Because Nier is an honest father trying to make a living. Visiting Popola again today. As far as I remember, pretty much every uh, NPC in this game just has one line of dialogue. I'm coming, I'm coming to see you today, Popola, I promise. 
was at least you know maybe that gets updated throughout the game but the first time you encounter an NPC they'll typically just have one line of dialogue here's the local library which is very well stocked given the uh, rural appearance of the village mother and father are very busy so I have to watch my little brother I don't mind, actually. He's pretty cool, and we like to come here and look at the books. It seems like people did nothing but write books back in the old days. I can't read them either. They're all written in funny languages. These books speak of ancient technology far beyond anything we could ever imagine. What could have happened to this world? And this door is locked, unfortunately. If I remember correctly, this door will also be locked. I guess it's locked, yeah. Popola asked me to organize the books, but I had no idea there were so many. I never should have taken this job. Oh, that's too bad. There are a ton of books in here, though. Yona doing today? Her cough isn't any better. Mm, that's worrisome. I hope she gets well soon. Me too. I feel so helpless. Other than making sure she eats properly, there just isn't much I can do for her. Most days I feel like a total failure. Oh, stop that. You're the finest father a girl could hope to have. Well, anyway, I was hoping you could take care of this for me. I got a request from someone in the shopping district. They need you to get some mutton from the Northern Plains. Got it. I'm on my way. Since you're going to the Plains, let me give you a map. It'll come in handy. Trust me. Obtained Northern Plains map. Press select to display a map of the local area. You must obtain a map of the area before you can view it. Oh, and one more thing. Would you mind purchasing three medicinal herbs from the client while you're at it? I used my last one earlier. Here's some money. Wow. Wow, a thousand gold. Medicinal herbs are pricey. I don't think herbs cost though. No, I don't think herbs cost this much near also of Greece. I forgot about that. Well then buy some for Yona while you're at it. You don't have to. It's okay, really. Thanks, Popola, for everything. Huh? You know, all the work you do. You've been telling the villagers that I'm for hire, haven't you? Oh, what? It's nothing. They need help, and you were the one to take care of Yana. That's why everyone leaves. I suppose so. Um... That's three pieces of mutton and three medicinal herbs, all right. Thanks. We will for sure grab that for her and see what's going on with the person who needs help in the next video. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.